Greetings guys, this is Dograb and today I'm doing my full review on the T-44, the tier 8 Russian medium tank. I will be talking about its gun capabilities, its armor capabilities and of course about its mobility of the tank. As you can see I've just finished my grind to watch the T-54 and I can't wait to tell you guys everything you need to know about the T-44. So let's get started. <laughs> So guys, first of all the mobility of the tank, let's take a look. The top speed of this tank is 51 km an hour, that's an okay speed for a medium tank. It's not a scout, it doesn't need a crazy speed like 70 km an hour. I think 50 km an hour is a really good top speed limit for the T-44. The mobility comes in really good when relocating to help out other uh, parts of the map. You will really see the mobility and work in the replay as well. The traverse speed is 44 degrees a second, which is also really nice. It's not the worst, it's not the best, but 44 is really good. The tank will turn quick, very quick indeed. It's not a sluggish tank. Turret traverse is 48, is also really good. The turret turns quicker than the hull. Doesn't really matter, but it is a really good tank. If you turn the tracks in combination with the turret, then of course you will be able to engage an enemy tank in less than a second was standing behind you. One thing you should keep in mind is that the T-44 doesn't always drive that good on certain terrains. The terrain resistance can be really weird in some points, especially against IS-3s. The worst enemy of this vehicle is the IS-3, where I will be talking about a bit more after we have covered the armor of this tank. But I have to cover the IS-3 as well because that can be a really dangerous tank for this one. Alright guys, the gun of this tank is a 100mm with a rate of fire of 7.41 which gives it an actual reload time of 7.7 .7 seconds. That could be better in my opinion, but it's also not really bad. It does an alpha damage of 250, but only has a penetration of 175. And that means that this tank should be played as a medium should be played, of course. You need to have the size of enemy tanks to, yeah, to penetrate them. And as I was telling about the IS-3, the IS-3 is the worst enemy because you cannot penetrate the IS-3 frontally. Instead, if you, of course, will yeah, aim at the top of the IS-3, which has a really low armor value, you will penetrate that. But from a distance, it's really hard to take down IS-3, frontally at least. The accuracy is 0 0.35, which is not bad. It could be worse, but I think the accuracy is alright. Aim time 2.3 seconds is also not really good, but it is... Yeah, you can deal with it, of course. So guys, for the armor of this tank, I've jumped us into Tech Inspector. Let's take a look at the armor of this tank. At the front, we will get 90mm, which is sloped really well, as you can see, but it doesn't help that much because it only gives you 100 and. 50 millimeters effective which is of course not enough to bounce equal tier or higher tier targets the side of the tank isn't sloped at all is a flat surface of 75 millimeters and the rear is 35 millimeters what you can do to increase the chance of bouncing is of course angle the tank as you can see the side will get ricochets off but the front will of course be really weak indeed if you angle the tank like this then a ricochet can happen but then you of course have to be really lucky you can only angle the tank to increase the chance that a bounce will happen, but don't be angry if it doesn't happen because bounces are really yeah, hard to pull off on the hull of the tank. I managed to bounce a Conqueror while I was side scraping, so side scraping is possible, but again, watch out with your side armor because it is really thin indeed. So the turret armor is a bit better, as you can see 120 millimeters on the front, but as you can see on this place here it's not sloped at all it's a flat surface here on the front which gives you yeah just 120 140 millimeters same on this side next to the gun mantlet that will be an easy pen for 
almost every tank that will hit you. But as you can see next to these hit zones there are some ricochet boxes as you can see. Every shot that will hit the side of your turret will of course be an automatic ricochet even for higher tier targets. The gun mallet is a bit troll though as you can see there are some really troll parts of 200 and yeah 40 but this is 120 millimeters with almost 120 millimeters spaced armor above them so this is a really weird a gun metal actually sometimes it will absorb a shot for you sometimes it won't so you are really lucky if a shot gets gets absorbed by your gun metal if not so don't be angry because that's this the environment of this tank it's not made for bounces you can only get lucky bounces on the side of the tank we've got 100 millimeters and it's a flush surface and it's not really angled at all so it's not gonna be a bounce for you the rear is also 100 millimeters with these ricochet zones are on the side again but this flat surface will of course be an easy pen well now let's take a look at the is3 and keep in mind that the t44 only has 75 millimeters of penetration and the is3 is one of the worst enemies for the t44 same with the is6 the is6 is even worse but the is3 is certainly one big enemy frontally as you can see here are some yeah a little bit less armor but i've never managed to penetrate the front of an is3 but as you can see if you want to have the best chance of penetrating it frontally try here these yeah tiny bits next to the point of the nose here that should give you the best chance through the tracks nah, not really a possibility you can try of course but i don't think it will work the side of the tank is a bit interesting though because all russian heavy tanks have got this spaced armor plate but as you can see yeah 175 millimeters around here so this plate is not going to be penetrable for the t44 but if he angles it then the armor will even be more but guys there's a really easy way to avoid yeah hitting this and that is just shoot it in the tracks because as you can see the armor is really low on the ice 3 see here 23 millimeters no problem you will be penetrating that all day long even if the tank is angled a bit don't try here just try to shoot it here in the tracks as you can see or in this drive wheel that will also be a penetration for you never try to hit any of these spaced armor bars on the russian heavies I wouldn't even try to yeah, aim for the turret. You can always try, but I don't think the turret is the best way for you to penetrate this tank. Rear, of course, as you could see in the intro of the armor, is no problem at all. So keep in mind that the IS-6 and the IS-3 are one of the worst tanks you can meet. The IS-6 is even worse. You cannot even penetrate it at the side, as you can see. Yeah, you can, but I have never managed to penetrate the side of an is Six, which seemed like really weird because it's only 120 millimeters flush maybe the tank wasn't flush when i tried to penetrate it but the front is yeah no luck for you the turret is also nice sloped side can be a possibility but as you can see aim above the tracks for the is6 rear it's not a problem at all just the best way bet is the lower plate on the bum of the is6 as you can see it's really big but the whole of back of the turret is also no problem as you can see if you want to penetrate the turret of the is6 try the sides but these are one of the worst tanks you can meet in tier 8 for this tank so keep in mind uh, that you have to engage these tanks a little bit different than other tier 8 or 9 or 10 vehicles So guys, here we go, we're driving on the map, Mountain Pass, and we have got a great matchup here. I am driving off towards the western part of this map, I want to conquer the, that side of the map by going into the dip. Just before the big hill there, because I feel that that is a really strong position for the medium tanks to get there, they can conquer the... Yeah, all the enemies and lock them down. But first I have to cross this really dangerous place and that's the most unbalanced place on this map. 
you get spotted without you spotting the enemy, but luckily I get away with it without getting any damage whatsoever. So guys, my plan now is to set up an ambush for all the enemy tanks that will come through this pass here. So I am going to stand up here and put up an ambush for the enemy. I'm keeping my gun towards the place where I think the enemy is going to come out from. I'm just waiting here to uh, see if there's any enemies coming. And if they are, I will put one shot into them and pull back. While I am doing this, I'm of course keeping an eye on the map. Because I want to see what enemies are going to get spotted by my allies and I want to see what the enemy has planned out for this game so it's just a waiting game now I just have to look at the map and see what is happening I can see Mamex 3019 there on the yeah middle part of the map he has certainly spotted my team so I know that most of my team should be spotted by now and as you can see more of the enemy are getting spotted at the moment so I'm thinking are they going to proceed through this pass here so I think, yeah, let's just see if I can get some shots off, but doesn't seem like it still. So I think now I can pull back because there's not any enemies coming through here. But then I see there's a cluster of enemy tanks spotted there. And it seems like they're going to proceed through here now. But I am going, I thinking, okay, I can put an ambush on the, uh, a little bit later because I can see that the other... Uh, the rest of the enemy have gone yeah, to the other side of the map. Put one shot into the comment there and I immediately go back to proceed doing my ambush shot. So I'm setting up the ambush again here. And precisely on time the T-44 arrives. Put a shot into him and I pull back. He misses and I put a shot into him. But as you can see an ISU 152 thought there would, there would be no enemies coming. So he went up front. But I'm thinking, how can I defend this guy? Just standing back here doesn't make any sense. I can't hit the enemy and they can hit me. So I think my best bet is to go and help him out. To just go stand next to him. It takes a while for me to realize it, I can see. But I do have to watch out because the T-44 is a really good player. And he certainly has got backup. Yeah, there we go. He's got a lot of backup. So I think, okay, I have to help this guy out immediately. T-44 peaks, put a shot into him, the ISU-152 takes another shot. I'm going in front of him to defend the ISU, put a shot into the Comet, pull back. I angle the tank and the T-44 bounces on one of my side plates on the turret, which was really nice angled. Black Prince there, he's showing his side, put a shot into him, I pull back. Trying to side scrape here, trying to bounce a shot. But I don't make it happen. But enemy T44 puts a good shot into me. But it does not matter. Still got a lot of my health remaining. Trying to put another shot into the side of the Black Prince. But doesn't go in. Unfortunately. But one big shot. Uh, yeah I took a shot there. And it took out my gunner. And my turret was jammed for a second. But it's all fine. I'm waiting for the opportunity to put another shot into the T44. He misses me. And I put a shot into him. And he wants to have revenge, but he drives around the corner, but he forgot about the IS-2 <laughs> who was standing <laughs> behind me, and he got taken out. So that is how to take out one of the best players on the enemy team. And as you can see, almost all of their good players have died already. But guys, take a look at the allied base, because the enemy have broke through there. And I'm thinking by myself, okay, these guys can easily kill the Tiger P. So I am going to turn around to engage the guys at my base, of course. Um, I can only hope that the enemy doesn't start capping. If they start capping, then we are, of course, doomed. Then we will automatically lose the game. But as you can see, there's also a T-34 in the middle of the map. And I'm thinking, okay, the enemy hasn't capped yet. So let's try to put one shot into him or two shots into him. Because the T-29 will hold off the enemy for a base for a bit longer, hopefully. Put one shot into the T-34, I pull back, see what is happening. The T-29 took out one of the dangerous tanks near our base. I put another shot into him, but then I can see the Yak Tiger 88 is driving through our base. And he starts the cap, so I'm thinking, okay, let's now go back towards the base and defend. Have to watch out though because the T29 hasn't been spotted for the whole of the battle. But that does not matter. 
But guys, as you can see, the really nice mobility of this tank comes into a good work here. We are able to drive straight through the other side of the map. And I'm holding as much right as I can here because I don't want to get spotted by the T-34 again. Okay, now I am thinking about how I should engage the Yak Tiger AT-8. My plan is to just drive in there, find his position, maybe take a shot and circle him down. Because I have to take him down, of course, as quickly as I can. So it's just... I, yeah, it's a risk that I'm going to take here, but in my opinion, I have to. There's the Egg Tiger 88. He's tunnel visioning. He doesn't see me. I'm wiggling because I thought that we would, of course, take a shot. But as you can see, a surprise there. A T29 got spotted, but as you can see, the Egg Tiger 88 turns really slow. So I put a shot into the T29 because he's able to hit me. T29 bounces again. And I can put the finishing shot into him as you can see. There we go. And now I only have to circle the Yak Tiger 88. Who looks like to have a 50% crew in this tank. No idea how that shot didn't track him there. But that is not a big deal. Because he turns really slowly. This is not a really dangerous yeah, situation in my opinion. So he repairs when I finally manage to track him. But it doesn't matter anymore. I already have this guy. No idea how that didn't track him either. But I am behind him. It's over for this guy. And now it's just a really big fat German snack for me. Which is of course really nice. There we go. Put his engine on fire. He yeah, extinguishes it with his fiber extinguisher. And I put the final shot in. So now I'm thinking, okay, let's immediately help my allies out with the T-34. But it looks like the Panther has got it under control. But I still think, okay, let's get out, uh, get up there and help him out. But the, uh, the Panther 2 manages to take him out. Really well played. He's, of course, a really good player, as you can see. But he manages to take him out. So now I am thinking, let's try to take down the Yak Panther 2. I'm going to rush into the base because I... I'm again going to try and circle him. But if I can get another way to engage the Yak Panther, then it will be also a really nice effort for me. There he is. He's hiding behind the stone and he is taking shots at my Yak Panther friends. Don't, of course, want that to happen. So I'm bombing in towards the Yak Panther too. But as you can see, he's not aiming at me and I can see his track. So I'm going to shoot him through his drive wheel, track him in, him in position, and doing damage to his tank. At the same time. But the T-34 of my team is going, coming up behind me. I don't want him to steal the kill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive in front of his gun to let me take him out. But the Egg Panther 2 repairs its track. But luckily, I can put a shot into its lower plate and it's over for him. So, and the scumbag manages to hit me once. But it does not matter. I've still got enough health remaining. If the, uh, yeah, the GW Panther doesn't... Managed to hit me again. I will be fine, of course. So now I'm loading a high explosive shell. Because it does more damage when you penetrate a high explosive shell. Uh, our artillery have got a really low armor value. So that will be no problem penetrating the GW Panther. But I'm looking for him. But I can't seem to find him. But he is behind me. I also aim to take a shot. Because I want to maneuver and avoid a shot. Oh god. Luckily he didn't kill me there. And I knew I could take the kill. Really good game. Let's take a look at the post-game stats, guys. So, guys, this was a Ace Tanker badge for this game. We've also picked up four tokens, Fire for Effect, Fighter, as we did kill four enemy tanks, Hand of God, and Bruiser. We also got a Defender Medal and, of course, the High Caliber Medal, as we did 4,500 damage. So guys, in this game we finished top on experience and on damage. I got 1410 base experience and I made 4 kills. And in total I did 4512 damage to the enemy. In this game I fired 24 shots of which 23 hits and 21 penetrated giving us the damage total of 4512. 
I received 8 hits of which 5 penetrated, 3 bounced and the hits received from Splash was 1. As you can see 5 of the 8 hits that I got were penetrations. So that yeah, gives you an idea how good the armor is on this tank. And to achieve these kind of results I had to travel almost 4 kilometers to help out where I could. To defend the base, to put one or two shots into the enemy, kill and help out my ally teammates and of course finishing the game in style with that sweet kill on that enemy scumbag. So guys this was the review, I hope you liked this T44 review, hopefully it's been informative to you. Please leave a like as I did put a lot of goddamn time in making this video and I hope this video was very informative for you. Guys, thanks for all the views and all the love on my channel. I'm getting more views than ever. I will thank you guys out of the bottom of my heart for that. And I will, of course, see you next time.